Okay. Um, so um, I'm going to present you what the work we have done on the on the septin and had a few mi for a few time I'm going to focus on the problem of the curvature sensing. So septin, if you don't know, uh, they are um, we are working on uh, budding septin and they are located between the mother and the daughter cell during cytokinesis and you can see them here uh, with fluorescent or here by electron microscopy. Um, during the cell cycle, septin undergo uh, some modification like phosphorylation, sumoylation or desumoylation. And from a structural point of view, uh, uh, during the they, they start from a hard glasses shape here that you can see there. And uh, they split in two rings with perpendicular uh, direction during the, during the cytokinesis by uh, interacting with the actomyosin cortex rings. Uh, from a structural point of view, what we know about septin is that they assemble uh, in vitro uh, in high salt concentration as an octamer um, with a symmetry uh, with a symmetry here, an octamer or something which is around 32 nanometer in length. And by decreasing the salt concentration or by interaction with membrane, uh, septin organized as paired filament here. Um, and they, they polymerize to form a longer uh, filament. Uh, so our goal and what we are interested in uh, is we want to understand if the septin uh, can modify the mechanical membrane properties of the membrane and uh, also if septin are able to sense the membrane curvature. So I'm going to start with the mechanical membrane properties. So what we are doing is, uh, as I told you, we are working in vitro and what we are doing is we, we, pr we produce some giant unilaveral vesicle, which are vesicle with a lipid bilayer that we label in red. The size is typically 10 of micron and we incubated with this uh, vesicle some GFP septin, uh, meaning green. So in the absence of septin, you can see that uh, this is a section of uh, confocal microscopy. The vesicle are completely spherical. And when we had the septin, uh, we, you see some yellow signal, meaning that it's uh, green plus red. And, uh, <coughs> and in the absence of septin, if we have the same osmotic pressure inside and outside the protein, then we also have some spherical pr protein and all that in, up in the low septin concentration. Uh, if, we had, if we make an osmotic shock on this vesicle, that means that we make the pressure inside and outside difference. We can make an hyperosmotic shock, that means water goes in on an hyperosmotic shock, that water goes out of the vesicle. And usually when we make this kind of shock, when we make a difference of 20%, then the vesicle they burst. And in the presence of septin, we see that the vesicle, they are able to resist to very high uh, shock. And here you can see that uh, they resist to a, no, a shock of 350%, which is really huge. So um, we found here that the septin, they rigidify the, the lipid membrane. Uh, to go further, what we've made is that we make some micropipette experiments. So you have here micropipette, here the vesicle still labeled in red for the lipids. And we held this vesicle with a micropipette by imposing a difference of pressure. And this difference of pressure uh, is controlling the tension of the vesicle. And uh, what we are doing is that we keep this difference of pressure constant, meaning the tension of the vesicle constant and we inject over time the septin uh, on the vesicle. And what we monitor is we monitor the tongue length, which is the length that you can measure here and is directly related to the variation of the vesicle, uh, of the vesicle area here. And what you can see here is that over time, that means increase that injecting septin concentration, you can see that the vesicle uh, become more and more red. That means that there is more and more septin interacting with the vesicle. And that's what you can see here with this red curve that you see that over time there is more and more septin. And what was striking for us is that we keep the aspiration constant in this experiment, but we see that the tongue length here is decreasing uh, over time, meaning that the variation of the, the area variation is decreasing of the vesicle, sorry, is decreasing over time. So, you what this means exactly size wise, this shape? What corresponds to the shape of this graph? What do you mean? Yeah, well, which percentage of this actually? Ah, how, how you measure this? Uh, 
Uh, so what we measure is we simply measure, we know the radius of the vesicle, we know the tongue length, so then we just have the vesicle area. It's very small decrease of uh, area fraction. Mm -hmm. So if you want to see something like 2% of decrease of area fraction, you can clearly more visible see it here with the length of the tongue comparing to the, to, to the vesicle. So it's just to see some very small fraction area. So, um, and that's what I'm quantifying here. Uh, we made that for different vesicles and we see that the septin reduced the apparent surface area of the vesicle from 2 to 10 percent. And I remind you that all that is made as a constant volume. That means the septin, they can either change the mechanical property of the membrane and or reshaping the membrane. So we know that they change the mechanical property of the membrane and that means that they also uh, reshape the membrane. And this is what we are going to focus now on. So um, the, the goal here is that I remind you that the septin, they are located between the mother and the daughter cell here, the constrictor sign, which is highly curved. So we want to see if the septin are able to sense this uh, membrane curvature. So we again take a giant unilamellar vesicle and this time we, inc we, have, we were working at higher septin concentration. And you can see that the vesicle, they are not run, so this is spinning uh, projection, so it's not anymore a confocal, but you can see that the vesicle are totally not run anymore, they are sort of bumpy, and it's completely static, it's not something which is moving. And if we increase again the septin concentration, then uh, here it's 600 nanomolar, you can see that we have this kind of spiky vesicle which appearing uh, with um, with a distance between spike, which seems to be uh, repetitive. And that's what we quantify here. Uh, you can see that the, um, so the, the wavelength between two spikes is ranging from one to three, four microns. So it's probably depend on the, um, on the vesicle size. But if we look on the, on the curvature here imposed and uh, on the length of this spike, it seems that the septin, they are imposing some spike of one micron one over, uh, one over one micron uh, radius curvature. So um, to go further in this, uh, so it's, uh, I forgot to say, it seems then that septin are able to sense micrometer uh, curvature range. So to go further, uh, we produce some, uh, PD, uh, some um, wavy substrate. So how we do that? We take a PDMS, we stretch the PDMS, and then we make some uh, oxida oxidation. And by relaxing the stress, so this oxidation, they make two layers with different mechanical properties. And by simply relaxing the stress, then we obtain this kind of wavy pattern. This is made in collaboration with the team of Joao Cabral in the Imperial College London. And we are able to, uh, to trigger, the, to tri to, to trigger yeah, the, the wavelength and the amplitude of the substrate in the micrometer range, which is exactly the range that we are interested in. So after what we are doing is that we uh, put some lipid bilayer on top of the on, on top of the substrate and then we incubate it with the septin. You can see here a low magnification images where you can find the, the wrinkled surface that we have here, and this is kind of defect that we have uh, when we make the when we make the, the substrate. And if we zoom in. Um, you can see that you have some septin filament here aligning, and this is some infused vesicle which remain when we make the lipid bilayer. If we zoom in again, uh, you can see that the septin, they are not aligned, uh, they are aligned parallel to the heel on positive curvature, and this is clearly visible with this greenish color. And on, on negative curvature, meaning in the valley, they seem to align perpendicular. So that means that the septin, they doesn't like positive curvature, but they more like negative curvature in the micrometer range. This is what is quantifying here with the alignments uh, on the top, meaning on positive curvature, and on the bottom, meaning negative curvature, which are uh, orthogonal to each other. Uh, moreover, if we focus again on this kind of defect that I show you, we clearly see that the septin, they align parallel to the heel. Uh, and when there is a crossover, they do not go in the valley, they continue on the positive, so that means they really don't like uh, positive curvature. Uh, this is also what we quantify here with again this uh, reddish here and greenish color here. And if we go uh, more in the valley, 
then we can clearly see that the septin they align parallel to the parallel to the valley, meaning that uh, they, 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 they really like uh, this curvature. So we have been able to quantify we have been able to quantify the, the density of the septin depending on the curvature. And we have been able to see that, uh, so for the lipid, so this has not been made by SEM, but by um, fluorescent mi microscopy, but you can see that for the lipids, there is no sensing of the curvature. This is what we expect. The lipids, they are uniformly distributed on the, on the surface. Uh, but the septin, they are really uh, present some different density depending on the surface, and we can find them that they have a higher density for a curvature of two micrometer, which is the top of the hill where they are aligned, where they are arranged parallel to each other. So as a conclusion, I show you that uh, septin have a curvature of preferences uh, with this wavy substrate. This curvature of preference is, is for sure related to the, to the deformation on the GUF that I observed. This is exactly on the same range. So the question is how that something which is 32 nanometer can sense and induce some micrometer scale curvature. We have a theory for that, but unfortunately, I really don't have time to talk about that uh, now. Um, so, as a conclusion, I show you that septin, they can uh, deform the membrane, they can affect the mechanical property of the membrane, they can sense and feel some micrometer size curvature. And to finish, I would like to thank Alexandre Beber, who is the PhD student who performed this work. Uh, he is co-supervised co by Aurélie Bertin and me, uh, hold the Basro team. Uh, the uh, uh, collaborator, Joao Cabral and Manuela Nanyani, who make the wrinkle surface, the electron microscopy for the scanning electron experiments, and the Nikon Center for the fluorescent microscopy. Thank you. We have time for questions. <laughs> so, can you connect your surface? Uh, association of your protein with what happens in cells in the orientation of the septin. So yeah, so um, what we mm. what we found what well so that's, so it's more the theory who, who gave us that. But what we have is a, in, a, in a theory explain what we have in cell with this hourglass shape and the splitting because when it's split it, it's because it's too narrow. Mm. So this is too narrow for the septin. So when it's too narrow for the septin, that's mean with the theory we have, and we can discuss about that later if you want, that means we think they prefer to bundle, and that means that then it would be a bundle. And I think I have the images somewhere, at least I hope I keep it yesterday. I oh know I remove it. <laughs> um, I if you look at the images of the septin in vivo, um, it seems that they are, um, if it's a monomer of filament, they are par parallel, and when it's in bundle of filament, they are perpendicular. So it's really because we think that it's when it's too curved, they bundle, and then they like this curvature, and then could explain what we what we have. And do they are they dynamic? Yes, yes, oh. they have. Okay. They are. Um, well, they undergo some some. That's what I said at the beginning. They undergo some phosphorylation, sumoylation, and so on. Mm -hmm. But already, I think just the curvature make them, uh, I think, moving. Because they, 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 when it's too narrow for them, then they, they, they bundle and then they, they, they switch probably. Um, so, so if I if I remember, <coughs> septins are GTP binding proteins, yeah. GTP is yeah, but but they don't. In fact, uh, we don't know exactly what why is why is there still some GTP because all that is made in the absence of GTP. If you had some GTP, they make any no. Not that we know, at least. And, and it's pretty really clear now that the GDP is involved in the assembly of the complex and yeah, particularly to form different types so of complexes. So I was complexes. coming to that, and this is related to Tommy's question. Um, do you know if you have only monomers, or do you have, you know, septins can form? So what, uh, yeah, so we have, at the beginning, we have the, uh, the rods. And we make, it, so this is really important, that we make them polymerize on the membrane with the filaments. If you make the filament first and make them the polymerize, polymer, pol, pol, yeah, <laughs> it's going to be a little different. So you think this is not being driven by polymerization of septins into a higher order structure? Once again? So 
the effects that you see of yeah. the binding. It's because they polymerized, and then it's because of these long filaments. So it's not the cause. I'm trying to discern between the cause and the effect. Yeah. I mean, is it? Well, it's probably related. Um, but, uh, is it because septins have to assemble into oligomers, therefore they change? The well, they can assemble on what they want, but then if you, when it's curved, then they, they, they this is what we have. Okay. This is perfect timing, so uh, thank you very much, Stephanie.